Cheers. Charlotte. Cheers. Congratulations. Welcome to the compliance world. Uh, and congratulations for passing your ACAMS yeah. examination last night. Thank you. Yeah, so how was it? It was hard. It was much, much harder than I was expecting. Granted, I, I kind of did not prepare myself the best for it. I took the, the six-week live course for it. Um, the instructors fra- were fantastic. The material was fantastic. Um, the study guide is great. It's incredibly in-depth. All the materials that they provide you with, amazing. The exam was not exactly similar to that, um, and they did kind of warn you. They say, you know, the practice exams and the flashcards and the stuff, that, like the little homework exercises, are not going to be an exact match to the exam. They do warn you of that. Okay. And, of course, I went in a little overconfident, <laughs> thinking like, oh, I'll, I'll nail this because I'm nailing the practice exams. Um, but it, it kind of perfectly reflects what the compliance field is like. You know, you train, you study, you read, and then... The actual job is incredibly different. Yes. The, the actual, the realities of it are, you have to apply that knowledge, right? So I had passed by the skin of my teeth. <laughs> um, and it was hard. It was it was really tough. But I, I made sure to use my, what is it, three and a half hours to make sure I got it. Um, and I think it was just a, a really, I won't say fun. It was a good exercise in applying those kinds of knowledge pieces yeah. of knowledge um but it was good i'm glad i good. did it i'm glad that i passed i really didn't want to retake it um and I'm, I'm glad that we're here less than 24 hours later yes talking about it yes absolutely yeah. and it was funny because we were sitting outside the room of your mm-hmm. exam pacing it was yeah. almost like waiting for somebody coming out of surgery um i mean i've never been so nervous uh in my I won't say in my life, but you know, I, I felt myself uh, and West too. We were all sitting there, just just extremely nervous and anxious. And when you came out of that room, and I looked at your face, I was thinking to myself, "Oh no!" Yeah, you looked shell shocked. Yeah, I mean that's the only way I can can explain yeah. it. You look exhausted. Uh, yeah. You looked a little bit uh, shocked, and it took you about a minute yeah. to just go. I passed. Yeah. <laughs> and, I think, and of course the cheers yeah. that went out was just, it yeah. was just ex- exciting. I definitely yeah. wanted to do the bit of like, oh, sorry guys. No, no, no yeah. don't do that to, to I your, know, to your I mother. Know. I did, honestly, I was too excited. I was even thinking last night, so it's like, it's an online proctored exam yeah. and they record you the entire time and you have this like tiny little view of yourself and they have a little red dot for recording. Um, and they were, rec- you are getting your results and when the exam is still going so they're still recording you and so I got the screen came up um and it was like you know you scored this you know result pass and so I like was trying to not celebrate too much because I felt really good about it obviously Uh, because I go I don't want them to like see me like whoop and cheer on on camera well you did Um, look exhausted it was exhausting it was it's a huge achievement really it really is and for anybody who is listening who is thinking about a career in AML Mm -hmm. compliance we, you know, do recommend that you um, take the ACAMS or any certification, you know, um, uh, program in your area, but do not underestimate how difficult it really is. Mm-hmm. Um, I did the same thing in 2007. I sat the International Compliance Association's, um, it's the International Anti-Money Laundering Diploma. Uh, mm-hmm. I went in thinking it was just going to be an easy little certification uh, no big deal. Everybody passes, no problem. And I was shocked too. Mm-hmm. Again, same thing. Three hours. Of course, and we had to do ours all hand handwritten. Yeah, I got lucky um, with not yeah. having to do that. Think, did you have like multiple choice? Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. And I, uh, I mean, I definitely came at it with a bit of the wrong mindset, and I think I just got very lucky mm-hmm. that I did pass. Again, I, I didn't. I scored okay. <laughs> I didn't. I definitely didn't ace it. Um, but I, I approached it with. Um, like a midterm mindset, I was like, you know, you do six weeks of material in college, mm-hmm. and then you have a midterm, and I was like, I've crammed for a midterm in four days, I can cram for an for ACAMS, ACAMS exam in four days. <laughs> no, you can't. No, you can't. You so <laughs> do take, uh, for, for our audience, please do take these mm-hmm. uh, um, certifications very, very seriously. Mm-hmm. They are a great foundation if you are looking into the, uh, you know, compliance as a career. Now, going into that, so why did you choose... To a, yeah. Well, not ACAMS, but why are you choosing yeah. to join the compliance world? Um, well, I, I mean, I grew up in this, right? Like, I my earliest memories are at 
the London office and the boardrooms and what was it like the pen on the back of all those expensive chairs Shh, <laughs> at, at, the, <laughs> at that fancy corporate yeah. office. So for anybody who doesn't know us, my name is Kimberly Smith. I'm the founder of Silo Compliance Systems and I mm-hmm. uh, used to be a compliance officer and MLRO, it stands for Money Laundering Reporting Officer. I worked in London. I also you know, uh, worked in Cayman. Charlotte is my daughter. Mm -hmm. And so um, she used to go with me to the office many, many times. And growing up, you were about eight or nine, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, You never, when people, when your children ask you, what do you do for a living? They want to hear, you know, doctor, lawyer, policeman, fireman, things Mm -hmm. like that. Things that they can conceptualize and understand and see. Mm -hmm. um, The tasks that that your parents are doing. But I could not explain to you what a compliance officer um, was uh, when you were eight. Until one day, for whatever reason, I had to bring you into the office because I was doing a training session for a new lawyer who we were onboarding. So I had to give him our, uh, you know, anti-money laundering compliance training um, for the, before he could really start uh, doing any work. And Charlotte had to sit in that room with me. And it was really cute because after an hour, you sat there and you were so good. You either had a book or a coloring book or something. Mm-hmm. I can't remember, but you were just such a great kid. There's a good chance I was taking notes. <laughs> yeah, you you were probably taking notes yeah. with your uh, crayons, I guess. And at the end of that hour and a half or two hours that mm-hmm. I was did that training, uh, you looked up at me and you said, Mom, I finally know what you do. Mm-hmm. And I said, what is that? And what was your answer? Um, you're a baddie detector. I, I'm a baddie detector. Yeah. And it was such it, that's so true because yeah. that is what AML compliance is all about. We think it's about regulatory compliance, which it is, obviously, you know, we're trying to protect our companies that we work for uh, from any regulatory risk, the risk of penalties. Uh, You're trying to train your staff or your colleagues, really, uh, to make sure that they don't inadvertently onboard the bad guys. Uh, And you're doing the risk assessments whenever you're looking at any new clients or customers that uh, come into your organization to seek that are seeking your services to make sure that they are not the bad guys. So you're trying to be the baddie detective. And I know mm-hmm. that sounds really simple. Mm-hmm. Um, that's what it is. But that's what it is. It is, it uh, is a simple yes. responsibility. It's a heavy one. It's a heavy responsibility. But it's very straightforward. Yes. Um, now, and, that's not yeah. to, to um, say that we are going into the role, um, and, and this is something that I have often seen and not liked, is when people... Uh, who are onboarding a client, they, they go with the, they are guilty until they're proven innocent. Mm-hmm. You know, you're almost assuming they're the bad guy mm-hmm. uh, until they can prove that they're, prove otherwise. Uh, but there are red flags. You, you do kind of learn them through the years, and uh, you try and find find the bad guys, the, bi- the bad actors. Mm-hmm. So it is a tough job because you're doing two things. You're trying to, again, protect your the organization that you work for, and trying to stop the bad guys from abusing them, mm-hmm. and which is ultimately then protecting the global financial system, which is needs protecting. Mm-hmm. It needs people like us uh, on this job, and it does serve a greater good at mm-hmm. the end of the day. Uh, and that greater good, and I think we sometimes get lost in the regulatory risk and the ticking the boxes and making sure we've done this right and that right. But anybody who may be feeling down. Uh, and, and overwhelmed, mm-hmm. do you understand you're doing a, a great job. And a good thing. And a good thing yeah. for the future. We mm-hmm. are trying to protect, again, the financial system. And what that will ultimately do is that um, it keeps our government's uh, leaders in check. Um, it is making sure that, you know, our infrastructure, you know, bribes is, mm-hmm. a, is a big thing that we're looking for, any kind of bribery and corruption and what happens during bribery and corruption It's when people aren't meeting building codes. Um, you know, roads aren't built right or bridges aren't built right, you know, with mm-hmm. all the right safety checks and things like that. So we are protecting the physical in- infrastructure in our uh, countries, hopefully, and, and in other countries. We're also making sure that our government leaders are acting with integrity and those who do not are uh, found out mm-hmm. uh, and prosecuted. Uh, obviously, money laundering, you know, the sex trafficking, drug trafficking, things like that. That is, you know, helping the individuals who could otherwise be abused, mm-hmm. um, and those who need our help to make sure that the, the bad guys are mm-hmm. found. So there is the um, the greater good 
sense mm-hmm. of purpose in this career. It's also, you've got a kind of a legal mindset. Um, uh, you need a technical mm-hmm. skill set these days, which is what makes me very excited about you joining mm-hmm. this profession because you have that technical. You want to mm-hmm. give a yeah. little bit of an explanation of your background? Yeah. Um, and for those who don't know me, I'm Charlotte Walton, mm-hmm. CAM certified. Yes. Is that correct? I think so. ACAMS? ACAM certified? C-A-M-S. Yes. The you get the letters comma? after your name. Yes, I do. Yeah. Um, I compared it to a PhD, which I realize is not necessarily <laughs> correct, <laughs> no. but I get the letters, and that's what I care about. Um, and obviously the prestige of joining the gold standard of, you know, compliance associations. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I graduated with a degree, a business degree in information systems. Um, and kind of what we were talking about earlier, like I don't use any of that degree for my first job out of college. You know, like I did a, I did a very specific track. I got a specific internship um, at a specific company with a particular role. None of the information that I was tested or quizzed or had homework assignments on did I ever use in that work, in, right. that, in my nine to five, my like corporate job. It was all learning. You know, you kind of learn the the mindset and the frameworks. Um, But yeah, none of that is like practical and applicable to your corporate career. And your Uh, career, you went into data analytics? Yeah, so I was a a data engineering consultant, uh, implementation consultant. Um, But the thing that was really helpful that I was learning um, is one kind of that like foundation, like not only like here's what to do, but here's how to do it. Here's this basis. Like here's where you need to start. Um, and it, you know, when I, the more I think about it, the more closely it aligns with things like compliance and things like you know corporate services, legal services. Um, you know, the the very first step before you start designing anything, before you start coding, is always the collection of requirements. Um, and that's, I mean, you could even apply that to like when you're creating your AML program or when you're onboarding a new client or when you're doing a risk assessment. Like it's always like. What am I looking for? Mm-hmm. Where, what am I, where am I starting? Like, what, what's the end goal here? Um, what do I need to be looking at? Who do I need to be talking to? Um, so I started in information systems, um, and it got me really thinking in a term of systems, um, kind of conceptually, like, very broadly in, in an abstract sense, and then also, like, coding, right? Mm-hmm. Very, very technically. Um, so it got me kind of thinking in these, you know, database diagrams and stuff like that. And then I... You know, consulting just wasn't for me because I didn't feel like I was having enough of an impact on people. And that's the thing that I really cared about was doing the right thing, helping others, doing something for a kind of greater purpose. Mm -hmm. And I think that a lot of that was kind of informed by, you know, watching you work, being part of the office, being part of, I won't say being part of, what, six? Um, (laughs) But just like being always surrounded by lawyers. Like, you know, anytime I went, you know, somewhere with my mom, it was to like a working lawyer dinner or something (laughs) like that um and like the amount of calls and meetings that I witnessed or heard or or heard about right um it was always that it was always you know we're trying it to was also the reason yeah. why uh, half the time you didn't get dinner on time. Yeah, I, I can remember or I was cooking the dinner. <laughs> you were cooking yeah. the dinner, you know, even at 10 because yeah. uh, I was always so focused on work. And I can remember one time mm-hmm. there was a great story where I'm working away at home one evening and it was probably mm-hmm. like 7 or 8 o'clock at night. And again, you were a little girl and, and you said, Mom, are you going to feed me dinner? And I just <laughs> went, didn't I feed you last week? Yeah. <laughs> and you kind of left. Yeah. But yeah, you were always kind of in the background hearing. Um, everything. Yeah. yeah. And, and what I also find, this is, I, I have great hope for our future because mm-hmm. I think your generation um, are so, you your generation, I think, really wants to make the world a better place. Yeah. Unlike my generation, it was just, we just wanted to make as much money as possible. Right, yeah. Uh, which I failed at terribly, by yeah. the way. Um, <laughs> but um, it was, this is where I, I think the next generation of compliance officers mm-hmm. that are coming mm-hmm. uh, into this industry, it's fantastic because mm-hmm. y- you guys can see the bigger purpose. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think there, that's where we've got some real hope mm-hmm. for, for uh, you know, fighting the injustices and, and um, you know, bringing some social, you know, and financial equity to back to the world. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, by, by no means am I against, you know, wealthy people. I think mm-hmm. there's fan- fantastic wealthy people, you know, mm-hmm. out doing there that the are right doing, thing. doing good things, yeah. donating to charities. And doing it legally, too. Yeah, and doing it legally. <laughs> like, um, yes, yeah, exactly. So, so, you know, I'm not against, you know, um, you mm-hmm. know the wealthy. I'm not kind of saying that. It's just that... Uh, but we need to be there to protect them as well. Yeah, you know, and they're they're 
you know, their future and their mm-hmm. children's futures and their wealth. So mm-hmm. a lot of the people that we do work with um, are like wealth managers and investment managers and things like that. So again, helping them protect their business from being used mm-hmm. from by the bad guys. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so again, I think it's, there's, it's great that your generation is showing more interest. I have talked mm-hmm. to a lot of people. I do get a lot of phone calls um, from people who are interested in the career and don't know where to start. Mm-hmm. And one of the very first things I do say is, you know, take the little courses, see how well you do, then go for the, the bigger certification mm-hmm. uh, examination. Because those uh, certification examinations are expensive. What mm-hmm. was it, about two grand? About two US, grand, yeah. Yeah, U.S. Um, dollars. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's expensive, and I, got, and I got a deal on it, and I got a discount. Yeah, um, you did. And we even had the conversation of we need more people mm-hmm. um, in the industry so you know, we were kind of having that little philosoph- philosophical debate mm-hmm. one day about uh, why put that barrier of entry mm-hmm. in there. And I was like, well, because, you know, the yeah. certifi- those organizations, they need to make their money so they mm-hmm. have the good tutors and the teachers yeah. and, the, and the professors teaching. And ICAMS is a gold standard. Yeah. You know, it is, you know, I, I remember thinking when I was doing the application for the exam, mm-hmm. like had already paid for all the material, but then you have to take a further application just to be qualified enough to potentially fail the exam mm-hmm. and I always thought that was kind of silly and then I felt or I, I took the exam and I felt how difficult it was mm-hmm. and I was like oh this is why like you do have to be of a certain caliber in order to not even, just even sit yeah you even, even sit, sit the exam because yeah. they don't want people to spend two thousand yeah. dollars just to fail it so yeah. they want to make sure you are of a you do have some Getting background and get in th- yeah. before you go and spend mm-hmm. that invest that money yeah. But it is a very good investment for anybody who is, mm-hmm. is looking. And again, it's not just ACAMS. Like I said, I did um, ICA, mm-hmm. uh, International Compliance Association, and I know there's a lot of others out there. So mm-hmm. we, we don't get paid for yeah. you know making these recommendations. We're getting yeah. no money from either of these organizations, and uh, so you know do your research and mm-hmm. and um, you know look up the certification programs in your area and what you can take. And you had to do all yours online. Mm-hmm. I did mine back in London, you know, going to classes, I mm-hmm. think on Saturdays or something. I had a very good uh, professor as well. It's just, it was fantastic. So my next question mm-hmm. for you. I was going to say, do we want to talk a little more about ourselves now? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. That's, why are we here? <laughs> why yeah. are we here? Yeah. So um, why are we doing this podcast? Yeah. Um, and that was one of the questions that we were kind of going over. Why are we kind of doing yeah. this? And one of the, the reasons got me thinking about doing a podcast, mm-hmm. talking about the compliance career, and the, the podcast title is Comply or Die? Comply or Die. Comply or Die yeah. dot tech. Was T-E-C-K. Yeah. Uh, T-E-C-H, H, yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Comply or Die dot tech is going to mm-hmm. be the website for it. And um, only because dot com was taken. And it was 10 grand. Yeah, it was buy. 10 grand to buy. I was like, no, no, thank you. And um, Comply or Dice, it's mm-hmm. a little bit of tongue in cheek. Mm-hmm. Uh, because uh, and the horse, yeah, yeah, and the horse. Yep. There was a horse called Comply or Die yep. back in uh, mid two thousands that I did bet on. He didn't win. Nope. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, so it's a little bit tongue in cheek mm-hmm. uh, because we won't die <laughs> yeah. if we get it wrong. But it is constant learning. Yeah. Uh, sometimes you do feel very, very overwhelmed. The mm-hmm. past few years, particularly, have mm-hmm. gotten increasingly. Uh, demanding on the compliance officers and back in February I was a guest on a radio show a morning radio show Mm -hmm. and I talked very openly about the compliance career and um, I didn't think many people were listening to it Mm -hmm. until the next day I had a lot of people coming up to me and thanking me for explaining the complexity of it. And one of the things that I had even said during that radio show was that just because I'm a compliance officer now does not mean I am qualified to mm-hmm. fit that role or that role, depending on which industry. I said, you know, I'm probably really good for like law firms or corporate services. I said, but I wouldn't, I would be horrible in, in um, a bank or the insurance mm-hmm. industry because I don't have any experience in those particular uh, professions. Because the compliance officer needs to really understand the business Mm -hmm. not just compliance the customers product services offers exactly delivery channels delivery channels uh, you know the types of customers Mm -hmm. uh, being a compliance officer for a law firm who's serving just the local community Mm -hmm. versus a compliance officer uh, for a law firm that's dealing with international transactions Mm -hmm. and clients very different roles very Mm -hmm. different skill sets 
uh, and of course, then depending on what other industry you're in, and now we've got things like cryptocurrency, the uh, uh, the, the yeah. exchanges, the virtual assets. So it's taking mm-hmm. the complexity. You can't just say this person's a compliance mm-hmm. officer. They're you know they've got the experience. Bring them in. Yeah. You need to have a kind of a bigger understanding, mm-hmm. and it might take a while to to get a full and it's understanding. Very different from the way that you entered compliance. Absolutely, which was really just kind of like here's some paperwork. You yes. know, here's paperwork that can legitimately save lives, save companies, protect people. And no, it's that, an that was, task. yeah, no, yeah. that, that was, yeah. yeah I get, so f- for those who don't know my story, I, I was a, um, a legal secretary. So I did my degree in finance in San Francisco. I uh, was a legal secretary at a bank for the general counsel. Decided to head down to the Cayman Islands. Mm-hmm. I decided to take a break. Mm-hmm. Went down to the Cayman Islands to um, waitress. Yeah. I wanted to be a waitress for a dream while. job. It was my dream job. Yeah. yeah, I blame Tom Cruise in the movie Cocktail because oh, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, he had a character that was uh, out on the beach bartending, and so I thought I would take take a break mm-hmm. uh, and go be a waitress mm-hmm. at a beach at bar. The, the ripe age of 24. I was 20. I was your yeah, age. Yeah. Exactly. So don't go quitting. I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. um, so I did that. And of course, I always had aspirations of going to law school. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I thought, well, while I'm here in the Caymans, before I head back to the quote unquote real world, mm-hmm. let me go get a job at one of these law firms. And of course, I had the legal experience and, the you know, again, in the paralegal and the finance background, so uh, I did get a job as a legal secretary. Did mm-hmm. in in the uh, at a law firm in the Cayman Islands. Uh, did that for about a year and a half, mm-hmm. and then I thought, okay, I am ready to go to law school now. Let me go back to the states and apply to law school. And um, before I could do that, got a little surprise. <laughs> Found out she was coming along. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, kind of put a yeah, wrench but, in your work and your plans. Yeah, a good wrench, though. Yeah. Um, and, of course, went back to the firm and said, uh, can I have my job back? Because I couldn't be a, a single mom yeah. pregnant uh, with and no job. Uh, and they were fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, they said, well, we've actually already you know, given your job to somebody else, but mm-hmm. we need you to do, we could use you to do corporate secretarial mm-hmm. work. So I, was, I became a corporate secretary, corporate administrator. And, um, uh, of course, then uh, a few couple years later pass, and I have to leave the, Ca- uh, the Caymans. Um, and so I'm actually back in the States for about a year, mm-hmm. and that's when I decide again, okay, apply to law school. Mm-hmm. And so I reach out to the um, the the former managing partner at the time, who I barely knew. Mm-hmm. I think I might have seen him in passing, mm-hmm. but he knew my name because we used to have to, I used to have to support him via email mm-hmm. uh, a lot. And uh, and so I reached out to him, and I thought, would you write me a um, recommendation letter for law school? And uh, he just went, just come back to work. Yeah. Just come back. And I was like, um, doing what? <laughs> yeah. and, and that's when I got the job in the, the London office. Mm-hmm. And he said, yeah, he goes, uh, he goes, well, what do you want to do? And I said, well, just, I just want a challenge. I want a mm-hmm. really good challenge. I actually still have the email exchange really? printed out. Yeah. I have to show it to you one day. And he says, you know, what do you want to do? And, mm-hmm. and I just said, I, I just want the biggest challenge you've got. Mm-hmm. And lo and behold, that's kind of how I got yeah. into the compliance. But I still wasn't AML compliant. Right. Fast forward a few years. And then, of course, that's when the AML, by that time, they had had a few really good people come in and go, uh, that didn't last, mm-hmm. and um, that's when I got kind of pushed into the AU. I was I was asked, you know, or I wasn't asked. I was told you're going to be mm-hmm. our next AML compliance officer, and I remember saying, "No, I don't want that job. Mm-hmm. I've seen too many grown men cry." Mm-hmm. Did was you my response. did you feel like you weren't like qualified for it, or absolutely like, not? Yeah, no, I did not feel qualified for it at all, mm-hmm. and uh, and they were, they were basically saying, "No, um, we're not asking." Yeah, <laughs> this, this, this is, is going to be your, this yeah. is your requirement, <clears throat> and so again, going back, you know, as a single mom, it's like, oops, I mm-hmm. guess this is my job now. Yeah, <clears throat> and I did not go and um, so I had the job um, before I got the ICA certification, mm-hmm. and of course, I, I am one of those. It's like if you give me something to do, I'm going to figure out right. how to do it right. Yeah, and so I did go in and get that certification. And um, like I said, and then I, I absolutely loved the job. Mm-hmm. Absolutely loved it. I found a lot of uh, efficiencies that we could apply that nobody had applied before. Mm-hmm. I was doing everything I could to make it easier. I was trying to make training relevant. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I, I became the compliance officer because I was a very good administrator 
administrative person. Mm -hmm. I could tick the boxes. I could, you know, manage the lists in the Excel. And basically, it was a very back office function. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is no longer the case. It is becoming very much a a front line uh, Mm -hmm. function. And it is also becoming a very... Uh, much a core process, yeah. not just a cost of doing business, but a core process of a business. Mm-hmm. And w- I'm seeing more demand for even um, like uh, metrics, management metrics. Mm-hmm. Uh, so many managers, managing partners, uh, CEOs, CFOs, uh, they, they have certain scorecards, which they kind of monitor or what you would call metrics. Uh, and that will be things like what were our our sales this week, you know, mm-hmm. what's what's our pi- in our sales pipeline, or you know, what's how's our marketing campaigns, how are they doing? Mm-hmm. Um, so they have these these uh, metrics that they look at each week, or at least each month, uh, if if not more frequently, uh, to make sure the business is on mm-hmm. on the right rails. Yeah, you know, and a lot right of those are, are revenue based. And yeah, they are. They're and very s- revenue based. And compliance is obviously not that exactly. But I mean, it's it's got a, a both very indirect and well, quite potentially direct effect on your revenue. It absolutely does. Yeah. And I think um, senior management boards, uh, CEOs, managing directors, they're all they're starting to see this. And mm-hmm. they're starting to realize if they, they've got to keep uh, as close of an eye on compliance metrics mm-hmm. as they would revenue, mm-hmm. cash flow. Um, you know, things like, you know, your accounts receivables, you know, how, how many of those are locked up and potentially bad debt, things like that. Mm-hmm. Those things that can uh, impact the bottom line. OK, mm-hmm. so that's what's been the focus, you know, before, I think, you know, the past five years. Now I am seeing more uh, AML regulated businesses uh, also want to see good AML metrics mm-hmm. and our, our compliance metrics. And that might be how long is it taking to onboard a new customer? or a client, how many of our customers were high risk or not. And that's mm-hmm. kind of an inside yeah. joke uh, with us because I was asked um, once how many of our customers or clients are high risk. Mm-hmm. What percentage? Uh, yeah. what, what percentage? And I had to go hold that question, let yeah. me go run some reports because I didn't mm-hmm. know. I mean, it was one of those things, kind of had an idea and I remember somebody else in my organization saying, oh, it's, it's about 5%. Mm-hmm. And I remember thinking, that seems awfully low. Yeah. And uh, so let me go back. And I ran the reports just for our office. And just for our office, it was 17%. Um, and that's not a bad metric to have. 17% is fine. It, it can be. It depends just, on your resources. It depends on your resources, and you have to know. Exactly, and you do need to know, and and yeah. so that you can up, do we, so you can then ask the questions: Do mm-hmm. we have enough resources to uh, have a seventy percent high risk mm-hmm. rate? It do our, does our program work? Do we it have does the exactly, in place? Uh, and yeah. again, it's one of those those. I think that's very much a, a key metric that people should have. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm even surprised these days how many people when I go, how many customers do you have, or how mm-hmm. many clients do you have that they don't even know. Mm-hmm. Uh, they will go oh, about five thousand or mm-hmm. eight thousand, so, you know. And to me, I'm like really should have that narrowed down. Yeah, you should really <laughs> know, know that. that number, exactly. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, you know, how many of your clients are high risk? Again, I mean, I guess that's one reason why they're coming to us mm-hmm. uh, uh, is to f- to realize, because they're realizing we don't have, you know, that compliance-driven system that can give us these numbers and these metrics mm-hmm. that management is now needing. Mm-hmm. And, of course, uh, so I think that is very important. I think that is what your generation of, and, and the new compliance uh, professionals that are coming into this industry, you're going to find it is much harder. Mm-hmm. There's much more demand on you than there was for me. I was almost forgotten about, you mm-hmm. know, it was like, I was just like, you know, we got Kimberly in the role and yeah. let's check, just check his box. <laughs> yeah, we're, yeah. We're, we're good. Yeah. We're safe. Um, yeah. Which, and, and that's Hopefully. Yeah. The, <laughs> the reality, right. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's, it's a comprehensive understanding of your risk. Yeah. Um, and, and maybe it's, I don't know. Maybe compliance was the wrong word to like initially introduce this like concept because it's really more risk management, risk mitigation. Oh, absolutely, yes. And it's yes. really like that's. I mean, and obviously when you do a program like ACAMS or ICA, that is the people who really know what's going on. They obviously understand it's risk. Yes, they understand it's it's risk, and then the consequences of this risk, and then how many people can be potentially harmed, how many dollars can be lost. Uh, but yeah, for a lot of senior managers of these people or people who've just been like tasked with okay this department's going to be under you now mm-hmm. they they don't necessarily have that same understanding of oh it's it's not compliance it's not like oh i just need to comply with the rules 
It is I need to understand, see, know, and predict my areas of risk. You're going to be a good compliance officer. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Well, to, to wrap this up, let's do some quick fire okay. um, questions, again, about ourselves. Okay. <laughs> um, it has to be very quick because yes. I think we're, yeah. Yes, because we're getting close. And mm -hmm. so I, I kind of want to just do some of the things that we had listed here so okay. people can just kind of know, know a little bit more about us. Okay. Um, so let's start with uh, what was your dream job? What was your dream career? Well, I always wanted to go to law school. Yeah. I was at a law school. Was there yeah, law, law school was was the uh, only one. Was was the only career yeah. choice that I never that you made. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Never, well, that's I never got to law school. Yeah. yeah. So then, what was the luckiest thing that happened to you in your career? Getting told I was going to be the AML compliance officer. Yeah. Okay. Being forced into that role, and I think that was, uh, in the end, and I have to thank those who put me in that role, mm -hmm. um, and also the fact that I had just extremely supportive management the mm -hmm. board the the senior management of the company i was working for at the time they were they gave us whatever we wanted and mm -hmm. needed is for that was available mm -hmm. to us at the time because both professionally and personally because i remember even like as a kid feeling like very welcome in that yes corporate work yes you know yes. sleeping uh, under your desk and, and <laughs> taking exactly. drawing on their chairs and stuff like that <laughs> But yeah, no, it was. That's it's a very human department. It's very it was yeah they, person and you know. they took it very seriously. Yeah. And I did not realize how lucky I was to have those people above me mm -hmm. giving us that support and and the resources and the time to learn it and mm -hmm. figure it out. Um, until I started talking to others in the market, I mean, I've had people you know sit down and cry, yeah. you know, going you know my my boss or my you know is never going, my boss or my senior management is never going to give me the budget or they just won't, they won't help us out mm -hmm. or, you know, uh, so yeah, it was, I didn't realize how lucky. So thank you to those who, mm -hmm. who uh, did um, kind of push me into that career and give, gave us support, the mm -hmm. support we needed, uh, both professionally and with the resources mm -hmm. uh, that were needed. All right. Well, my last one is, um, what was your biggest regret of your career? You said you had a good thing earlier. I don't know if that's still true. No, biggest regret. Maybe my biggest regret would be that I didn't understand the social importance of it. Mm -hmm. To me, it was still very much... Of compliance? Compliance. Wow. And it's, I'll admit, it's really only been mm -hmm. recently mm -hmm. that I have gone, there's a bigger purpose here. Yeah. And not, and, and not um, yeah, understanding that. Mm -hmm. Um, it's really funny that you say that because actually two of my questions yesterday on the exam were like what are the social and economic consequences of money laundering mm -hmm. um and i get that it's like chapter one yes w you know here's what it is and then here are all the consequences yes um and and i don't know if you're necessarily talking about like social consequences or, or more like social community um because i know that's something that we're going to talk about later yeah um i think that's also again it's a very human centric field it is not paperwork and administration and checking boxes it is about people it is and it, it's about uh not just finding the bad guys either mm -hmm. it's about helping the good guys mm -hmm. it's it's about making sure that there's less friction for your customers when you're onboarding them mm -hmm. uh, and we've got some very good stories about compliance both positive and negative that we'll share the technology mm -hmm. uh, that's being used uh, the potential for new technologies and the skill sets that are going to be needed for compliance, for tomorrow's compliance officers, which mm -hmm. are actually now today's, yeah. we, we need that that skill set today. Yeah, uh, we needed we needed it three four years ago, really. Um, so it's very good that uh, your generation is coming into this um, this field into this profession. We need your skills, and um, yeah. So so uh, I hope that you will join us for future podcasts. We've got mm -hmm. a lot of things that we do want to share and discuss and explore. And we, th we do hope that um, this will be useful for those of you who are listening, whether you're just driving to work or, or mm -hmm. you know, listening uh, in the background. And um, whether you're exiting your compliance career or entering it. Exactly. Or you're even thinking about it. Well, yeah. Maybe you're not in it at all. Maybe, or maybe yeah. you're, you're, you have to manage compliance people mm -hmm. or you're in the tech industry. Um, we are in the tech industry uh, mm -hmm. where we provide a reg tech solution mm -hmm. uh, for the small and mid-sized uh, compliance, um, you know, regulated businesses. So 
you know, that's that's most of our audience. But again, this can be uh, useful. These conversations can be useful for anybody who has who is kind of touched by the compliance uh, mm-hmm. AML compliance world. And uh, we do hope you can join us for future discussions as we explore this career mm-hmm. and all the technologies and skill sets needed. Yeah, we've okay. got a lot more stories to tell. Yes, and again. Congratulations. I'm, I'm really proud of you. Thank you. You are my daughter. I'm, I'm incredibly proud. I'm, I'm more proud of you for passing ACAMS yeah. than for getting your college degree. Really? Yes. It was harder. It was much harder than doing that. <laughs> i got to be honest. It okay. took significantly less time, but it was much harder. And I'm, I'm very happy to be joining an organization like ACAMS. So thank you.